Good morning, you guys. This is a Tracy Casey Arnold. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, it is morning for me right now, but you may be watching it at midnight, and that's okay. Uh, this is what we call our Five Minutes with God. Uh, this is a series uh, that we have launched in April. Uh, hopefully you got to listen to the April message where uh, during the week, two to three times a week, uh, the majority of them will be me, but there may be other people that are doing five minutes with God. I think you guys may have seen the one with little Lexi. Uh, she did her five minutes with God and my Lord, that was powerful. <laughs> but our whole focus is to try to take things um, that are either uh, of the way of the world, maybe things that are in the media or things that maybe I see that I'm experiencing or I see in people around me, or maybe that I see in other people that I'm coaching and just really bring it forward. Um, because here's the thing, I have made a 100% commitment uh, to the Lord to do His work. I have, like I said in the April message, decided to uh, sacrifice 100% of my business and give it to Him. Uh, you know, I, as I started to learn more about the Lord, and again, I've really only received Christ six and a half, excuse me, seven and a half years ago. And this last nine months, almost 12 months of a journey of really diving into scripture and learning it, I just started to see that God is the way and the light. He's the beginning and the end. And you cannot receive the things, the desire of your heart, unless it is through Christ. And so I submitted all things to him. And this is why I come, and I, and I preface that because there may be topics that I bring that some of you guys, because of maybe where you're at in your walk, or maybe you don't know the Lord, you may not know how to receive it. You may say, oh my God, who does this girl think she is? Or she's being condemning, or she's being ridiculed, or she's, you know, being a critic. And, and I'm going to sit here and tell you, there is no way in the world that that is what I am being. If I say I walk with the Lord and I've given him 100% provision over my business and my skill set. If my tone is intense, it is because of my intense passion to do his will and my love for people. And, and I'm a weird soul. I can meet you once and give you 100% of my love. I can just hear about you and I can give you 100% of my love. And that's because God says that is how we're supposed to be with each other. But because of society or maybe experiences, all of a sudden we lose trust in people. We're scared to give our love. We're scared to give our trust. You know, sometimes we hear thoughts in our head or we listen to negative people saying, don't trust that person. Or we're so scared in order to lose things that we have or scared how we're going to look to other people or scared what other people are going to say that we find ourselves not trusting or because of experience. People that you trusted, you couldn't trust. But I'm going to sit here and tell you every part of what I'm going to bring to these five minutes with God will be truly because of my passion to do one thing, to touch as many people as possible, to get in front of as many people as possible, to talk about the struggles we have day to day, because maybe through five, 10, 15 minutes, you find your solution or you find hope or you reground yourself in faith and you persevere and get through because God has that victory for you. Victory over everything, illness, finances, self-esteem, health, you name it. So that's what this is all about. And so today we got a tough topic. I'm going to go ahead and say it. There may be a few of you that may not want to talk to me for a couple of months or even a year. And some of you guys may be, oh my God, I love it. And you're hyped and you're motivated that it just hit you, pierced you, and you're ready to go make change. I do not lean into the likings of other people. I am one of these people to where I care, but because I'm grounded in Christ, I care more about what he thinks about me than what others think about me. That means even my husband, even my daughter. I love them, but I want to do God's will, not their will. Because he is the way. He's the one who provides everything. My business, my home, he provided my husband, my daughter. He gave that child to me as a gift. He provided my cars. He provided my Yorkies. He provided everything. So he deserves that level of respect for me. And so I want to talk about this topic. Here it goes. Being a 50% Christian. Woo, I can already hear some of you guys coming through the screen, and this is already going to be recorded when you watch it. A 50% Christian. And this is going to be a little bit longer of a video because I promised the Lord as I prayed before I turned this on, 
I'm gonna bring 100%, Lord, because if I bring 30 or I'm hesitant, then I am doing my will, not yours. I'm leaning into my understanding and fear, Lord, and you said to not be fearful that you are with me. And I know God is with me today as I bring this message. So I wanna ask you a couple questions. And I want you to be honest with yourself when you hear this. Are you living a life that proclaims God 100%? Are you living a life that, man, you exalt the Lord above all things? That means your materialistic stuff, your cars, your home, your dogs, like I mentioned earlier. That means even your relationships, even the fact that you want to be accepted by others, you're willing to forgo that to proclaim, that means put above everything Christ, including even your business, that you're willing to ruffle feathers, you're willing to lose business to say, G, you know, hey man, G, I am down with you. I love the Lord and because of who he is in my heart and soul and because of who he says I am to him and that nothing comes from anybody else but him, I am down with JC. Are you living a life where you're promoting Jesus? Where if somebody hopped on your Facebook, they could see that you love the Lord and that you give him all the glory. Or do they hop on your Facebook and here it comes, all they see is pictures of yourself selfies, pictures of your body and how great you look, or pictures of your business, or pictures of things like cars and, you know, vacations and money and all these things. And man, buy this and buy that. Do they go on your Facebook or your Instagram? Or man, here's a great one. And Jesus, again, this is your show. This is your mic. Use me, Lord. Could they even hang out with you? And because of how you are and what you say and how you act, when other people you think are looking, people that see you that don't know you can tell that something's different about you because of how you carry yourself or how you act or even how you treat people and how you talk to people. Could they tell from afar or close that you love the Lord and you put him above all things? Could they tell that the price that was paid for your life with the blood that was shed, that you just love that and you respect that and you're grateful for it. And it's the best thing. And so, man, Lord, how can I not do that for you when you did that for me? Are you willing to stand strong with Christ as he stood strong for you, even though it means that you would be beaten, persecuted, betrayed by the people closest to you? And trust me, I know about that. <laughs> Or even when it came to, man, all of a sudden, here you are. People think you're great and wonderful. Man, that was Jesus. They put him on a donkey and said, here's the king of the Jews. Woo, woo. They did all of that. But man, the moment that he got taken in that temple and they started to persecute him, every single one of those people fleed, which means he was no longer the talk of the town. He was no longer the one everybody thought was great. He no longer had the status. I mean, even his business, his business was to build God's kingdom. And man, he started building it. It was bigger than anything. It was a beacon. I mean, that's why people wanted to take him down. They were jealous over it. And they were scared that people were going to listen to him and not listen to them. And they would no longer have control. But he said, you know what? I'm willing to even forego that. Because I love these people above all of those things. So yes, crucify me. Beat me, take my flesh off my back and my front. Betray me, friends, flee, friends. Because these people, the ones here today and the ones yet to come, I love them that much that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to have whatever has to come on me, even if it means that I am one man standing alone. Do we live life like that? And I have to say it because, man, I can tell God's here because I'm getting emotional. Have you really made a decision to be 100% in for a beacon of Christ? Are you one that cares more about, hey, let me make sure that I'm giving you the message of what God is and how he paid for a price and you don't have to live that way? Or are you more focused on this is what I want, and I want, I want, and I need this, and I want to get here, and I, 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 I. Are you selfish? Are you greedy? God was not selfish. 
and he was not greedy. So are you living a life? <laughs> Here it comes as a role model where you can say you're down with JC, but if we go really look, if we hung with you, if we looked at you from afar, would we see Christ in you and how you live? You know, and, it, and it, I can sit here because the things God has given me, I know I fall guilty to these things. You know, it's crazy. I got this list from the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and go here. Again, this may be a 15-minute video. And for those of you that watch, you're going to be upset or you're going to feel like, go, Tracy. God is using you. But this is the list that God gave me about being a 50% Christian. That there's three different types. And I thought, wow, okay, God, keep it coming. And the sad thing was I found myself in a little bit of all of them. So I know I got a long way to go, but man, I'm going to fight to get there. Number one, a 50% Christian that is in the closet. And I want you to ask yourself, man, is this you? Because again, I found myself in a couple of these. Do you decide when it's okay for you to divulge? that you love the Lord and when it's not, so you only really kind of share it part of the time because you're too scared to share it all the time? Do you fear of lost friends, relationships, things being taken away? Fear what people will say? Fear of acceptance? Fear of looking like other Christians and what people will say about that? Fear of change? Struggling with truly believing, trusting a faith? Fear of not being held in a higher standard and accountability? You're, you're scareful of that. Okay, fearful of, you know what? I can't continue to do things the way I am. And I'm not willing to give up this. I'm not willing to give up, you know, hanging with my friends. I'm not willing to give up how I talk or how I say this and cussing and drinking. I'm not willing to give those things. I have a right to those things. Fear of being convinced in your heart that there are things you've done in the past and you know you would have to work on those. So, man, I don't want to work on those. I'm just going to stay where I'm at. I'm not willing to work on myself and change myself to better myself. Fear of sounding like a Jesus freak because God forbid what people think if all of a sudden you sound like a Jesus freak. Fear of ending up on the wrong side of the fence because you're scared. Man, what if I start doing that and all of a sudden people don't like me and that ends up being the bad people. I'm over here. Go Jesus. And then now, man, here I am all of a sudden not liked by everybody. Fear of hanging with JC. Fear that to share Christ with others would cause others to leave you cause others to feel like you're just trying to push Christ on them or fear that they're going to talk bad about you. And here's the crazy thing if that's you, because I did point, I had a couple of these things on this list. Then you're not walking with Christ 100% because God says you will have a victory and then I will fight your battles. Be down with me and I will be down with you. And we're going to talk about these scriptures. I'm going to give them to you before we close this. And again, this video may be a little longer than five minutes, but I'm going to do the Lord's work before I turn off this video and turn off this mic. Another type of Christian that's a 50% Christian, I love this because my husband labeled this one, is a fair weather Christian. Okay, this reminds me of the slaves that God sent Moses to go free. They were all down with Jesus and down with Moses when they were being freed from slavery. But once they were freed from slavery and they got some things they want, all of a sudden, because there wasn't more coming, there wasn't more blessings, they weren't, man, being where they wanted to be, rich and all those things, all of a sudden they started doubting. They started like, you know, complaining, which is crazy. Oh my goodness. And you know what is so funny? I've got a scripture that I did not put in here, but I talked about it on the show the other night about how God cannot stand complaining. That he literally ended up... <laughs> tired of hearing complaining that he casted down fire on half of their camp like I'm tired of hearing complaining because what have I done for you already and all you're like I want I want I want I need more 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 and so I want to ask you is this you this is the fair weather Christian once you claim him you do you claim him like man I'm down with GC but more because of who it makes you look like you believe, promote, and share Christ one day and then scared to share him another day. You share Christ because all of a sudden it upgrades you in status. That now you look important. Now you are accepted by a higher crowd. You sound more educated and more wise when you share Christ. It draws people to you, more friends, more business, more opportunities. So you see it as, man, I gain more when I do that. You're accepted by others that normally wouldn't accept you. 
social, social engagements, groups and clubs. Now you're in the in crowd, <laughs> the higher society crowd. It makes you look more of a caring person and not selfish. You're masking it. This makes you look more that way. Man, this is where you want to be because it allows you to convict others, judge others versus focusing on yourself and what you need to work on. God says, do not sit here and poke at other people when you've got something in your eye. Take out what's in your eye first. <laughs> you know, we talk bad about other people, but we're not perfect. Then it allows you to hide your flaws, to max behind your insecurities. Okay, you say, you know what? I believe in God, but... I'm down with JC, but I'm willing to be a Christian, but I'm not willing to go do this. You receive God just because you don't want to miss out on anything that you gain. Oh man, if Christ is going to bless me, I need to be with him because I need this. So I need to give it to the Lord because I know if I say that, he's going to bless me. So that's why I'm down with JC. <laughs> or you're the person that says, show me first and then I will. If God is then, then why doesn't he do this? If God is all this, then why hasn't he done this? Or you say, well, if it happens, then I will believe more because I ain't seeing nothing. And so until then, I'm not going to believe and have faith that God has got this or that it's going to happen. So you live out of fear. You base everything more on what you can see than faith in what you could feel. That means even seeing things not working or hearing people in your ear and telling you negative things versus what you know and having faith in Christ. So you're constantly left to right, left to right, up to down, up to down, front and back. You're quick to listen to others and be swayed by others. Or you will do acts of kindness only because it makes you look good <laughs> and it allows you to gain recognition, status, or to gain something. Again, like I said, there were things on these lists that even I too checked off and knew that I needed to work on those things. And then last but not least, this is what the Pharisees were, the hypocrites, okay, where you are prejudiced. Well, I'm sorry, we're over here and you're not a Christian, so you're over there. Or you judge others. You know what? You should be doing this and because you're not doing this, you're going to hell. And God said you should be doing this and because you're not... You're a nobody. Or, oh my God, I can't be hanging with that. I just, man, that is wrong. And you, or, or you homosexuals, you gays, you know, <laughs> versus man saying, you know what? I, I love you no matter what, because God loves me, but maybe using that as an opportunity to minister to other people. Man, that's how it is. Even when it comes to race or man, because maybe you're blessed and you've got money. Well, we're over here at the rich and proud, but you're over there at the poor, but you're a Christian. You segregate for others. You persecute others. You feel Christianity comes in this package. And if you're not in this package and you don't line up, then man, you're not a Christian. You use God to justify your actions. God told me to tell you. And because you're not, this is that. Or you know what? I had a dream and God said, you know, all of those things. But you're using it not to lift people up. There's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, listen, God has shared this to me. And I want to share it with you because I love you. But if you're saying God has shared this to me and you aren't and you're nothing and dang you and damn you and all those things to beat people down because you feel you're up here, that is also a Pharisee. It's how... These Pharisees have persecuted God. They're the ones who put him and sentenced him to be on a cross. Man, and more so, gosh, you're selfish or you're greedy. And you only do things that benefit you or you don't want to do them. And you have a hard time being about other people's happiness and other people's gain. Because if it isn't how you can gain, if it doesn't allow you to gain, you're not interested. But that's who you are as a Christian. You put everything above Christ. Status, cars, money. You know, being acceptance that, man, that's how you live life. You're a gossiper that constantly talks behind other people's back. Did you know this? And she said this. And she said that. You say things without thinking about others or even how it's going to affect them. It just blurts out of your mouth. You're more of an I versus a you or a we. You lie, and you know you lie, to cause drama, issues, and to divide and conquer or to justify your emotions and your fears, you'll make up a story. You have a hard time when others get ahead of you or have other success. Instead of being glad for them, you're jealous of them. You point out or look at faults because that makes you feel better. I'm going to poke at them so they end up being less so I feel like I'm more. 
Christians to you is a clique or a group that others have to qualify for. Or you fear someone or something rising above you. Well, I don't want anybody else to have a bigger name than me. I don't want anybody else to be bigger than I. Or I want this thing to be bigger above all things. So you put yourself kind of like a God. Or you put yourself above like I deserve this and I want this and I, I want to be above everybody else. You have time when someone else is loved, honored, or looked at as a great person versus celebrating it. That means, man, you have a hard time when somebody else is being honored or looks great versus, man, go, girl, go, boy. Man, I'm proud of them. God, yeah, I'm happy for you versus getting mad and being jealous. And, man, you will help others due to obligations versus from the heart. And God says to be a cheerful giver. You guys, I share these because I found myself in many of them. And whether you believe me or not, I didn't come up with these. The Lord's really been talking to me, sharing scriptures with me, and wanted me to record this. And I know this is a longer video, but you know what? I can really sit here and tell you that I'm doing the Lord's work. And the reason why I think we are swayed or we're only a 50% Christian is because of so many things, like things from our past, like shame and insecurities, abuse, addiction, rejection, fear of loss, or even man, society. Like we've removed God from government who governs our nation. We've removed prayer from schools. So we're not even teaching our babies about the Lord. We removed it. We don't want anybody to feel any pressure or, or feel like they have to be or, you know, be, you know, be against any of their religious beliefs when it's a choice to pray or not to pray, if you put it, but we removed it from school. Heck, we're even talking about, and they've been trying to, and they tried to take Christ out of Christmas. And then we become a society that, man, no, you can't promote Jesus because that's bad. Put him over here because, man, what if that bothers people? People don't want to hear that. We put him in a box. We put him over here. But, man, we've become a nation that exalts everything else. Man, above God. This is what I'm concerned about. You know, as a mom and let alone getting ready to be a grandmother, I want my grandson or granddaughter to be brought in a world where Jesus is spoken and he can look around and see people that walk in the Lord. He says, God says that we should be Christians where people know us by our walk, which means without even getting to know us, we walk differently, we act differently, we respond differently, we treat people different. This is my heart and my plea today. That I want us to just take note of this. You know, we're afflicted by things. We're wooed by society and media and Facebook. And we've got to take note so that we can not only walk straight with God. That sounds so walk straight with the Lord. But here's the part I love. So we can receive 100% of what God has for us. See, I'm a life coach about you living in your dreams and having everything you want. That's why I'm in this mic today. That the 50% Christian doesn't give you 100% of Christ. Only 100% of you walking with the Lord and being about the Lord will give you 100% of the victory that he has. And it means putting him above all things. Even your own understanding or influences with people even the closest to you. So I'm going to close with a couple scriptures, you guys. And I want to make sure, and Lord, again... This is your mic today. And I can tell you're here because, boy, I'm getting emotional. And I want to share these scriptures with you. And I've got them here on the computer. The first one I want to share with you, just so you'll know, this is how I was led to this. I didn't just come up with it because of some personal vendetta or personal thing. This is really where God's been putting me in situations where I've been seeing it with other people. And he's been really saying, this is what I want you to talk about. And lo and behold, as I went into study or prayer, here were some scriptures. And so one of the very first ones, as we close this, is Mark 4, verses 2 through 13. And he's talking about these 50% Christians I just shared with you. It says... He taught them many things by parables. And when he's talking about taught them, he's talking about his disciples. The people that he chose to be the ones to go out and share the gospel, to be beacons, say, hey, you're going to represent me. So he's talking about his disciples, okay? And he's talking about who they're going to go out and talk to. So he says, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching, he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. 
Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but man, when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up, but then choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some even multiplied in 30s, some in 60s, and some in 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear this message, let them hear this message. And what God is talking about is the 50% Christian, that one foot in and one foot out, and how there's all these different Christians that will never bear fruit or get what he's given and what he's going to pay for because of them being insecure or fear or listening to other people. But there are going to be a few, he says. It looks like a fourth that will listen and they'll hear me and they will go out and do what I say to do and work at being who I say to be and they will have a crop and it may even be 30 times, 60 times, it's gonna be 100 times. They will get 100%, maybe even 60 time percent of what my blood is gonna pay for on that cross. Another scripture that we're gonna end with is Acts 28, 31. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus with all boldness. That means, man, I'm going to teach about the Lord. I'm going to share Christ in boldness and without being hindered. That means, no, I'm going to go 100%. I'm going to promote you, Jesus. I'm not going to hold back and say, yeah, but yeah, but only when. This is Acts 28, 3, 31, where he says how he wants us to be. To be bold about promoting Jesus without hindrance. That means even second guessing and being worried about what people would think. Next, it's Mark 10, 15. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive me in the kingdom and who is not like a little child will never enter it. What he's saying is, how is a little child when they receive Christ? Man, oh my God, it's kind of like when they go see a movie on Christmas. They are like on fire. They're happy. They're sharing it. They're talking about it. They're proclaiming it. They're yelling it, kind of like I am, like a child who's excited. So anybody who's not excited about me, anybody who's not like elated with me, anybody who's like, oh my God, I can't wear to share, you know, share Christ with you because let me tell you who he is, will never enter the kingdom. Again, these are words from God. These aren't mine. I'm not persecuting today. I'm sharing today. And the last two, Luke 10, verses 10 through 12. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near, and I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for this town. Meaning, if you share Christ and people don't want to hear and you're ridiculed, dust them off your feet, remove yourself. If you've got backstabbers and you've got people talking about you, gossiping about you, picking you apart, then it says to remove yourself from them, to dust them off of your feet. But be about my kingdom, because if you're not, you can't have what I have for you. You can't be a little in with me and want me to give you everything. You can't be, oh, I'm going to live a little bit of God's life, but then God, where are you? I've been asking and praying for this. God says, well, when you decide to be 100%, and that means in your heart and how you try to live, I'll give you 100% of what I have for you. And last but not least, Matthew 10, 33. But whoever denies me before man, that means you will not share me before man. I also will deny you before my father who is in heaven. Which means if you're not sharing, if you're scared to share him because of what people think, or you're scared to promote him because you're worried of loss or loss of personal gain, society acceptance, or being talked about, God says, you deny me to man, I will deny you when it's time for you to get in heaven to receive eternal life with me and everybody else. You guys, again, I close saying, I don't need to know you. I love you. And I'm not coming from vindication or to talk bad. If anything, I'm pleading. And I'm saying, look at how you're living your life. Don't be scared to share Christ because he wasn't scared to die on a cross for us. Don't get caught up into society or all this talk in your ear. 
If you're doubting, go to God and open up the Bible. He'll speak to you and tell you what to do. Because he's for you and not against him. And not one weapon can be formed against you if you're with God. He will protect you. So you may lose some people. You may lose some friends. You may stand alone. But here's the thing I will tell you. You will never be alone because God is with you. And he's the only person you need because he says he's sufficient. Because you can only get to the Father in kingdom and eternal life through him. And all things that you have, God gave them to you. So like I say... Why not be down with JC when he's the man with the plan and he's the one that can bestow blessings and he's the one who put you above all things and died on a cross and shed that blood for you. Guys, thanks for being with me this morning. I know this is a long video. I don't even know how long it is, <laughs> but I hope you stayed tuned for every minute and listen because I'm going to say again, I don't know you and I don't need to know you, but I love you. And I'm pleading and wanting to share the gospel and what was shared with me. Peace out, you guys, and have a great day.